Can you tell us your name and which neighborhood you live in? I'm Elisa Victory Villanueva, and right now I live in the San Antonio neighborhood, but I've lived in all seven districts of this city. And what made you decide to run for mayor? I decided to run for mayor of Oakland because I'm from this community. I'm raised here, I've lived here my entire life. I'm a product of our schools, of our organizing, of our churches. And I understand that we're living under a system of inequity, of injustice, of exclusion, especially of people who look like me, young people, renters, immigrants, and working class families. And status quo is not working. It's not working for all of us. I'm running to have a world-class Oakland where everyone can thrive, be safe, be healthy, and have equal opportunity here. After interviewing Oakland <clears throat> residents, I found that public safety was the top concern for most people I spoke with. Can you briefly describe your plan of action for public safety and policing? Absolutely. I'm the only candidate in this race who is a policing and criminal justice attorney. I've been advising our city and cities and counties throughout this state on public safety. I will end our 19 years of federal oversight of our police department by getting into compliance with our settlement agreement. I will implement recommendations that were about removing non-criminal and administrative tasks from our police department, recommendations from our community, from our council, from our auditor, from our budget advisory commission, things that have already been legislated. I will simply implement them so that our police can better focus on responding to 911 emergencies and on improving their crime investigation and crime solve rates. I also want to invest more at the front end on violence prevention, increasing our Department of Violence Prevention and investing holistically in our residents because housing, health, education are all a part of public safety. Can you also briefly describe your plan of action for homelessness? I was homeless in this city. And right now, our policy is encampment management. And that's not working. Managing keeping people unhoused, putting up porter potties and washing stations at every park and sidewalk, it's not working. We need housing with a human rights lens. We need policy that's about putting people back into homes, back into shelters, and having real pathways to permanent and stable housing. Not tent encampments, not tough sheds, not tents, not sleeping bags. And so I want to invest in that by using the city administrative emergency powers that we've had since 2018 when we first declared a local emergency due to homelessness. I also want to invest more in affordable housing development, affordable housing preservation, using our existing funding streams, but also creating new ones through public banking, a system I advised our city and San Francisco on back in 2014, so that we can have public control of a critical public need, which is housing. Decisions the next Oakland mayor makes about a new Oakland A stadium will have a huge impact on Oakland's economy in the coming decades. What will you prioritize when making decisions about the Howard Terminal development? People and workers are my priority in this Howard Terminal proposal. I served for six months on the city-sponsored community benefits agreement process on the Jobs and Economic Development Subcommittee providing specific proposals about how to offset the economic impacts to our port and to other jobs already existing in the area and to ensure that we're protecting Oakland's workforce and building jobs that will go to Oaklanders. I will always, on any project, including Howard Terminal, take the position of negotiating in the public's interest for maximum public benefit, especially to offset any negative impacts to our climate, to our jobs, and to social equity. How have your past experiences prepared you to lead Oakland as our mayor? I have the lived experience of being raised in Oakland, again, serving in Oakland, being taught and trained to lead and organize from Oaklanders, from Oakland Youth Together, from Oakland's churches, from Oakland's elders. I have the benefit of living in all seven districts of this city, of seeing the different needs across our various neighborhoods and our diverse communities. But I also have the professional expertise as a civil rights attorney with a law degree concentrated in government. I've been advising this government and cities and counties throughout our state since 2014. 
I'm also a workers' rights advocate and represent a union right now that represents workers throughout this state, California, as well as into Hawaii and to Guam. I'm an expert on not just city policy, but statewide and regional. And I've been advising from behind the scenes and I'm ready to lead from the front. And is there anything I didn't ask that you'd like Oaklanders to know? Yes, uh, we're in a climate emergency nationally. Oakland is not exempt from that. We have extremely toxic and polluted communities from past environmental racist practices. Chinatown, downtown is one of them. We have 10 year gaps in life expectancy between Oakland communities because of those harmful policies. I'm running on a red, black, and green New Deal that's about greening our city, greening our jobs, greening our industry, but with a reparative lens, knowing that several communities already suffer more environmental hazards and toxins than others. I want to build for climate resilience, and there's also many candidates in this race who are taking money from coal, from fossil fuel companies, and that are not planning to protect our environment and our health and that is paramount for the future of our city. All right, thank you so much. To close, can you recommend a local restaurant that you wish more people knew about? Yes, can I recommend two? Sure. <laughs> you can go whatever you like. Um, the first is Minto's Jamaican. They have a juice bar and a Jamaican restaurant right here in downtown on 14th and 15th. And I also strongly recommend Coco Breeze, which is more Trinidadian Caribbean food located off of High Street. Both locally owned, both black owned, and have delicious, amazing, and healthy all natural foods, as well as vegan options. Great, I'll have to check them out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And remember to vote November 8th.